Welcome to Physics. Today, we are going to answer the question, what is air resistance actually? So you can imagine we have a truck going super fast at a certain velocity. Why? Because the engine is giving it a nice big force pushing to the right. But hang on a second. If you are in air, you see all these little particles bouncing around. Those are air particles. And as you travel, you slam into the air particles. So here we go. Fluid particles slamming into your truck. This is what we call air resistance. What is the effect though? Well, you see, air resistance, we don't really, can't really do much calculation with that. That's why we give this air resistance a name. That name is called drag force. Whenever an object is moving, only appears when it's moving because you are slamming into a bajillion particles, whether in air or in water, it's all fluid. So I'm write a reminder here. It could be air, could be water, could be honey could be mud, whichever it is. All right. Now that force has a very big role when we try to calculate things with a non-uniform motion. What happens when you throw a ball and there's air resistance? Well, first things first, let's settle our brain. What actually is, uh, what give a sentence for this force we call drag force or air resistance. So how do we write that out? We can say that as an object moves through fluid, the object, it will collide with particles of the fluid and we call it a drag force. So the general equation for drag force, we can say to be FD. Sometimes I will write it as just D. This is a general formula where half, we take half multiplied by density of the fluid, velocity of the object flying through the fluid, we call this a V square, and C and cross section area. Wow, what is all these things? Okay, okay, slow down first. This equation, by the way, is not in A-level syllabus, but you do need to know the simplified version of it. So, might as well we just look at the whole thing. Okay, so rho here is that... Oh, yo, 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 too, too fat already. Ah, this more like it. Rho is density of the fluid. You are flying through air. How dense is the air? Velocity is V, so this will be your velocity relative to your fluid. Oftentimes, we just call it velocity. Then there is C, which is something new called the drag coefficient. And lastly, your cross-section area of your object. How big is the object? If it's bigger, you're going to slam into more particles with greater drag or air resistance. So this is a cross-section area that you are moving at. But with all that, we usually in A-levels, we just need to simplify this down to the understanding that the drag force generally depends or proportional to, firstly, the velocity square and also the cross-section area. And this one, not exactly a formula, but you should probably understand how this works. So if you were to explain this in a sentence, you could say that the air resistance or drag force depends at this A level, okay, depends or increases. Oh, I should say increases. My bad, my bad. Let's change it to increases. Increases with mainly we say speed and cross-sectional area. Section area. There we go. All right, last note. Notice something interesting about the truck. When the truck moves to the right, the drag force is in the left. So this drag force will always oppose the velocity. Always fighting. You move here, it pushes you to the left. You move to the left, it pushes you to the right. You move up, it pushes you down. Always opposing. One last additional thing to note, this is a side note. Uh, if you go into a further study where you have something like what we call fluid, mechanics, probably in aeronautical engineering, some kind of fluid study, maybe chemical engineering or some kind of other physics fields, you will come across this drag coefficient right here. And what exactly is it? Uh? It's kind of to represent the shape of the object. So if you look on the right, we see all different kind of shape, right? Which one do you think have the biggest drag force? Just based on the shape. Ooh, interesting. You got a line, got this interesting shape, got a ball and got a nice straight flat line well actually the one with the least drag is what we call the airfoil which is this shape right here 
So what scientists and engineers will do is they will take these simulations, maybe in real, uh, in computer like this, or do some experiments in real life to study the effect of drag on different shapes. So this is an example of an airfoil. And you have see the drag. Wow, the drag is so small. But what is this lift? Oh, it's a force that, ha that appears when you tilt the airfoil either up or down. So it, hmm, we have seen this before, right? The drag generally is still okay. Then they'll put in a different shape. They say, oh, what if it's a ball, a round shape? The fluid or the water or air, whatever, will curve around this object. And then they'll study, hmm, what if this ball is spinning? What if the ball is not spinning? Plenty of things to go and study about shapes and aerodynamics. Now, if you say, miss, this shape, our Air Force shape, looks very similar. You are correct. We use this shape to design planes. And not just planes, sometimes sport cars and things like that. But planes are one of the most famous ones where you see this shape appear a lot in the body, in the wings. And, you know, to reduce drag, have better control of the air. But we got this inspiration from nature, actually. We study the birds and the fish and we're like, oh my goodness, their shape. That's really efficient for moving through fluid very quickly without too much drag force. So yes, go and stare at the fish. What's the shape of the fish? How the fish move? And go and stare at the bird's wings. Ooh, look at this. Someone did a study on the whale shape. And well, give me a nice wing picture. Oh, ah, different birds, different shapes, all airfoil. How do you go through air with the least air resistance or water? But the main thing you need to know for A-levels is that Drag force, a force, depends on how fast you are moving and how big is that area where you slam into the fluid, whether it's air or whether it's water. So the next time you sit in the car and the car is going fast, try this. Wind down the window, stick out your hand and feel the wind pushing your hand. That is drag force. Next video, we'll look at how to think of free-falling objects and parachute skydiving. So that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.